Hey, hi, I'm Gretchen, and today we're going to decoupage some Easter eggs. Um, before we get started, you saw the list of supplies in the photo in the beginning, but I also wanted to show you just a couple of the other sizes, um, just to give you an idea of the scope of size that you can find, but also um, to give you the thought that every um, napkin you use or tissue or whatever it is that you're decoupaging on, it makes it look completely different. So that's really kind of the, one of the fun things is that you can customize it to what you love. This egg, this larger one, is one of my favorites. I found them at Hobby Lobby. They are um, paper mache. This one has been coated twice in chalk paint. And this is a finished one that I just did, but it's a really nice size. Um, and then there's this medium one, or smaller one, sorry, that I got from Michael's. This one's plastic, it's just a simple plastic egg. And I just did this one in a little floral um, that I think is really pretty. And then of course, there are just the teeny tiny ones that are really the size of regular old eggs. Um, I did one to kind of go with that larger pheasant egg. But what we're gonna do today is work on a medium one. And today I'm gonna actually work with a blue and white pattern. That's been huge for probably almost a year now, blue and white decor has been really popular. And so this one's been kind of, I've done it on, on lots of different things, but I've never done a tutorial with it. And a lot of people find the scenes to be a little bit more difficult. So I thought I would work with that today and show you that it's really not all that tough. So we'll get started. So when you're decoupaging, one of the first things you wanna do is if you have a napkin, you wanna remove all the outer layers of it or the back layers. And one of the things I did wanna show you real quick is um, to pay attention when you are purchasing napkins because different size napkins may end up having different size prints. So for example, the blue and white we're gonna work with today, this is a dinner napkin. And as you can see, that's a huge floral print on it. And this is the cocktail version, which is just kind of a shrunken down. So you're gonna to wanna to take into account the size of what you're decoupaging on um, when you pick out the napkin. And it, it, it can change with look. You can do a large print on a small um, egg. It just has a completely different feel. But the first thing you need to do is take your backing off what I do is just use painter's tape. It makes it so easy. You stick it to the back, you just pull it down. And with this one, it's a three-ply napkin, which most really good napkins are. One of my favorite things about these Kaspari napkins is that they are really high quality and the ink and the pigment is really dark even after you've taken both of the backs off. Okay, so this is the napkin that we're gonna work with. And I just wanted to show you, I use several different methods of taking the pattern out, but on this one, it works really well to use paintbrush and a little bit of water. So I always keep on my workstation just a little Tupperware dish full of water. I think you can see that on there. And this is the um, brush that I like to use. I like them to be flat with an angle because I don't want something that's going to pick up a ton of water. And I, for whatever reason, find it much easier to um, outline it from the back. And so I'm going to go and I'm just going to take this, go around that pattern. And if you look how easy that is, it just is going to pull out. And this, um, I have different times that I like to cut napkins and sometimes I like to have it frayed or have it torn, but this just creates kind of that nice frayed edge that won't leave a harsh line um, and cuts out the little scenes on the napkin. I actually already started working with getting one done, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started right away with making the egg. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do while this is still dry is we're gonna take our napkin and kind of put it on just to get a feel for where we want it positioned so that that image, again, if you're, not, if you're working with something that's not this detailed or doesn't have a specific image that would have, say, a top and a bottom orientation, then you don't need to go through this, but this just helps me kind of get a feel for where I'd like this to sit on the egg. So I'm gonna take my soft brush and my varnish that I've put here in this glass jar. And I'm gonna just do a thin coat um, over one half of the egg. I've been finding it easier to just do it a half at a time. You could stand it up if you preferred that, but it doesn't have enough weight that um, 
I don't I would have to secure it up so this is just easier so I have both hands free and then I'm gonna take this place it where I would like it and then start I've got my little wad of saran wrap that I'm gonna start in the center and I am going to go out from the center because I want these birds and I just got a little more than I wanted there to be as wrinkle free and crease free as I can so you'll see there'll be little creases and wrinkles that form but if I take this I can kind of gently press them out or coax them into the part of the napkin that doesn't have an image and then you can't really see them so if it's up in that white section okay so I'm just lightly with pressure and I'm going down more than I'm pulling out that helps keep this from tearing and if you do get a tear no worries you can do an easy fix um, but as you can see okay so this part of the napkin is going to have a crease but because of the light and dark that's naturally in this napkin it doesn't even really show up okay so I've got one there so then I'm going to go under these edges where I don't have enough and I'm going to take this soft brush I've got and take it in. And this is where I'm gonna brush over. I am not going to put an entire coat over the whole napkin, but I am on these edges because I want this as smooth and soft as possible. And if it has any kind of lift, that will dry hard and not come out, which doesn't look so hot. And hopefully this is showing up fairly easily. You'll see. Okay, so I had to crease there. Because this brush is so soft, I'm able to get underneath these and brush on top of them without much happening to the napkin. Okay, so people always say to me, like, how do you get them without creases and without wrinkles? And if you look, I have both. Um, but they're not super visible and they're surely not clear in this part, which is where your draw your eye is going to be drawn naturally. So as long I have as I have all these edges down, that way when I overlap, also I won't be dealing with um, areas that look kind of murky or gunky. But look how pretty that looks. And I've already done this part on the other side. I've got to be careful since that one's wet. I've got a little bit of creasing up here that I'll work with in a minute. But in the meantime, I'm gonna let this dry. And that's my least favorite part about eggs is that the, because of the shape and not wanting to actually physically hold them, I'm um, it takes a while in between. But then I just can work on another one. So while that is drying, I'm working on these um, shells that I did and I thought I would just show, share them real quickly. I'm just finishing putting the gold around the edges, but um, I do have a tutorial on shells. So if you're interested in doing a project like this, shameless plug, um, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you'll see tutorials on how to do this, which is pretty similar to what we're doing, but just has some little tips and tricks that make shells easier. Okay, so I repeated putting the major image on either side, and I just now wanna show you kind of how I fill in this side and I've said this a lot on different tutorials but this is where I think it's super important to just remember that these don't have to be perfect you're going to notice kind of all the little things that don't look like you want them to um, but at the end of the day they still turn out really well you're always going to have parts that have wrinkles that don't fit together but that doesn't mean you're not going to have a beautiful project so like I like this little flower so I'm going to continue that on this edge and I'm just gonna take my hand and tear these. So this is where I do use some tearing and I use a little bit smaller piece. And I won't make you go through all this cause I can be a little um, nitpicky and I get this is a kind of a tedious part, but I just wanna show you what I do. So see, I'm just gonna lay that right over it, which looks like a natural extension to that. And then I'm gonna take this bigger flower and you saw that I just took this off. Those are the things you want to be really careful of if you can see that little bit of blue when you're tearing. If you've got a, a 
kind of a, a light background, which is always easier because it doesn't show overlap nearly as much. Um, you do wanna make sure that you don't have any edges, see like right here, where you have like half of an image, because as soon as you do that, you're gonna have kind of these random little spots and those do end up overlapping and looking pretty gunky. So I'm just gonna put this down to see where I think it fits well. And I think it actually fits pretty well here, but I noticed that this is gonna overlap this side. And I, it's harder for me to tear that and not kind of rip half the flower out so I'm just gonna come in here and edge that out because what I don't want is that creamy whiteness, well on this it's actually a little bit blue if you can tell, um, to overlap that other image. So there we go. So I'm gonna now go, and I'm gonna go over the top of what I did before. But if you look, then once I kind of roll this in, I overlap that a little bit. It's not that big of a deal, but, and the way those two kind of come together looks like it makes sense to me. So what I, that's what I'm gonna do for the rest of this. I'm just gonna go through. Okay, so this is a wonky angle, but I want you to be able to see what I'm seeing. So hopefully that'll work. We're gonna do just the thin coat of varnish. This is the gloss. I'll do the high gloss after this dries, but I'm not gonna do that for another, probably people say to wait 24 hours. I don't have that kind of patience, but I will probably wait two or three hours until this really dries and is um, completely smooth. And you always just wanna make sure that like, especially with something like this, that while you're looking at it, I like kind of go to the side and see, cause I can see from the sun um, or the light, if there are any spots that are kind of dripping or don't have enough on. Um, because I do think getting a really clear coat that doesn't have um, any drips or things of its own, that's just one more layer of kind of muck that I don't want. Okay, so I am gonna try not to mess with this too much because if you do, it'll leave lines, but I'm gonna let this dry completely. I can see there that right in here, I don't have enough varnish but there you go all right all i have to do now is put a high gloss coat on this and i'm all set i hope this was fun i really appreciate you watching and um, don't forget to subscribe because i'm going to do a couple more fun tutorials coming up so thanks for being with me